Hey my friends, Sean Tierney here coming to you from the studios over at theautomationschool.com and in this episode of The Automation Show, we're going to go back into Iris View 32 and check out those direct drivers. But before we do, I want to say a huge thank you to all our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash automation for supporting the show. And I also wanted to mention that we now have some swag you can get your hands on here. We have t-shirts, we have coffee cups, we have phone cases and more all designed by yours truly over at theautomationblog.com forward slash shop. So with that said, let's go over to the computer here. And you can see that I have the project from the last episode running. You remember this is where we were going through the control logics gateway. And because we were doing that to get to Data Highway Plus, because we were doing that, we had to use uh, RS Links Classic, not the light free version that only works with RS Logics and Studio 5000. We have to use the RS Links classic uh, ODD OPC topics. So that's what we did in the last episode. So now we're going to check out these direct drivers. But before we do, I want to add a couple of new drivers here to Links. So let me uh, close the RS2. We'll go in here into configure drivers. The first one I'm going to add is an RS232 DF1 devices driver for our KF3. If you've watched the previous episodes, you know we've been using a KF3. I am on the hunt for a pktx card and um right now they're all kind of really pricey around 200 dollars. so trying to find one uh, in the used market that's very inexpensive so we can maybe try setting that up and see how that works but in any case um this will be our kf3 that's on com one now and i'm going to switch it over to kf3 and i'll do an auto config and it's successful excellent and the next one i'm going to add same thing but i was able to get my 9300 usbs series C or Rev3 or whatever it was. Um, we unboxed it in a previous episode. Um, trying to get that to work with Windows XP and I, I figured out how to do that. And so we're going to set up um, a second one here as COM port 2. It's going directly to the PLC5. So let's go ahead and do that. Auto configure and everything's looking good. So now let's go to our RS2 here and see what we can see. Okay, so here's the first one. That's the 485. You can see I got my Micrologix 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, 1,500. Want to get the, want to get the 1,100 on there, but um, those cables are also. I'm waiting for a good deal on one of those cables, the uh, NCO ones. But in any case, um, you see, I got my uh, compacts and control logics there as well. So with that said, let's take a look at this next one here. You can see my direct connection to my PLC5 using the USBS. So now that that's all done, Let's uh, minimize RS links and uh, let's go ahead and stop this display here. Minimize that and we'll go over to channel. All right, so we'll open that up here in channel one. Well, for channel one, we're going to do the DH485. And if we drop down this driver list coming in from RS links, we can see the ABDF1-1. That's the one we just set up for the KF3 and the DH485. Okay, now there's no apply button here which is kind of weird, but it is what it is. So I'll just click on number two to save that. And here at number two, now I tried this DF1 direct driver with no luck. So I um, I had left COM2 unused in Iris Links Classic, and I tried to use the Serial 2, and no matter what I did, it just wouldn't work. So I uh, looked up in the user's manual for RS332, and it says if you're talking df1 to a plc5 you actually want to use the data highway plus direct driver or network type here okay so i select that and we come down here you can see it finds df1-2 okay and i'll click over here on three and so those are now set up so that was a little tricky but in any case we'll click on okay here and now we have to add our nodes and um you know, I'm not going to add everything that's on the DH485 just for the sake of time, right? So let's just add the 1200. We'll call it ML1200. Um, direct driver, DH485. That's the first one. Yep. Station number is 12. Now we could browse for that here. Let's see here. 12. Okay, good. Um, I'm just going to leave that the way it is. That sounds good. So we'll accept that. Okay, now... We'll do another one here, and this one will be for the PLC5 that's a direct connect via the USBS and DF1 full duplex. We'll call this PLC5 DF1. Okay, that will be on the second uh, 
channel. So we'll choose that station. Let's see if we can browse for it here. There it is. Okay. PLC5 Enhanced, we'll leave that like that. Okay, so that's how we set up our direct drivers. Now we should also be able to create some tags quickly. And what I'll do here is, I want to import all the tags like I did last time, but let's create a couple folders. A lot of advantages to having folders. So we'll do PLC5, I'll just call it PLC5B. And we'll do another folder, whoops, want it in the root. Do another folder called ML12. And for PLC5B, we'll go to the tag browser. Um, the node will be PLC5 and DF1. And let's come over here and we'll go down to N750. Let's see here. This is the uh, code for my Factory Talk View course. And of course, we've been using this all season. So here's N753. And um, that'll be good. We'll just bring in one tag here. Excellent. And then we'll do our Micrologix 1200. We'll bring in a tag as well. So that will be that. We'll change back to our Micrologix folder here. RSS, great. We're looking for the 1200. Choose that one. And we'll grab in 750 as well. 53 rather. Okay. Now, of course, if I wanted to, I could duplicate this tag very easily and make this mold two speed. And of course, change the address to 63. Okay, so we would have two of those. All right, might as well do that for the other guy too. Let's go over here. We'll duplicate that tag. We'll call it mold two speed. And we'll make it 63. Okay, so we got our tags. Now let's try them out here in our tag monitor. Okay, now here's a trick that a lot of people don't know. Not only can you press the asterisk to bring up the uh, tag browser, but the downside is it only shows you 100. Okay, it only shows you 100 of the tags. Now that's not a problem for here. I got these two guys, right? And let's see, I can do the one from the PLC5, one and two. And then let's see, the 504, one, Two, but I don't think, yeah. So I can't see the other PLC5, right? It's just, you know, th there's more than 100 here. Oh, no, there they are. Now, what would have happened if I had more than 100 tags, right? How would I get those in the browser? Well, the way you would do it is first you would type in like the beginning, like, and this is a, one of the reasons why it's great to have tag folders. So if I just wanted to see the SLC four tags, right, I could do that. And now it shows me 100 tags from the SLC4 folder. Same thing if I wanted to see all the tags for, let's say, ML12 asterisk. Okay, so that's a good uh, tip to know if you're using this old software, RS332. Somebody told me the other day it's still for sale, which is, which is crazy, but uh, I love this package. So um, in any case, uh, I, you know, I was a beta tester for it back in the day. I actually designed uh, Space Invaders inside the software, so... Um, it's just one of my favorite packages it's from the 90s. So let me go ahead and save that tag monitor. We can see everything's valid and working. And uh, we're ready to go to design our graphic display here, which I've called entitled. Great name, right? <laughs> so uh, let's just throw on a couple of, uh, let's grab a couple of these. Come on. Oh, these are groups. I forgot. So let's copy and paste this group over here. And uh, what I'll do is ungroup it. I'm not going to worry about making it nice and neat. And... Uh, We'll just bring her up here, maybe copy this text and put it down here. And uh, we'll make this the PLC5 DF1. And we'll make this one the Micrologix 1200. And here we will look for our PLCB tag. Okay. Do that again. Okay, now these are the 1200s. Hope you guys don't mind me going fast. We've been all season been doing very similar things. So I figured you guys didn't need me to go really slow at this point, right? 
So, um, you know, I'm a little OCD, so I gotta line these guys up and evenly space them. Maybe bring this down here. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. I can get, I can really get carried away. So let's save that. I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna rename it. And we'll call it screen one. How's that? Okay. Here we go. All right. Let's see if it works. Yes, it's working. Because so the PLC five, I, you know, it's those timers I have in there. They just the PLC five is so fast compared to like the micros and the slicks that. Um, there's not a lot of variability in the timer, so they all kind of end up being the same number. Whereas in the other ones, there's a lot of variability in them. But uh, in any case, uh, there we go. So we successfully used the direct drivers, the channels in RS-232 to talk to some legacy networks. We did DF1, we did DH-485, and, uh, you know, learned something. Don't try that, or I couldn't, didn't have any success with that DF1 direct driver. So that was a time sink, but uh, everything else seems to work great. And with that, that's the end of this episode. I want to take a moment to thank all of our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash automation for supporting the show. Um, those who do so get the show like a few days early over at theautomationblog.com, and they also get insider news and free downloads and all kinds of goodies. Um, I also want to uh, just throw out a mention about theautomationschool.com. That's where I work full time. That's how I pay the bills and keep the lights on and don't live on the street. So if you're anybody who's looking for any type of training, you can kind of see it all over here on the bookcase. We got Control Logics, Compact Logics, Micro 800, Micro Logics, uh, Panelview Plus, View SC, CCW with VFDs, and um, I'm thinking about some new courses to do too, plus updates to the older courses. So um, if you know anybody looking for training, send them over there. We actually have group enrollment uh, for companies. So we have, we work with a lot of Fortune 500 companies who enroll you know, five, 10, 20 people at a time. And uh, we're also doing something new for schools. So if you're, uh, let's say you're a college and you have an industrial automation course and you're having to do online training, you can enroll your students in our courses. And uh, we do two things for the instructors. We give them a free seat in the course so they can support their students. We also um, give them a group manager so they can man you know, monitor the progress of each student. Let's see that squ quiz scores and uh, et cetera. So uh, we're offering that because we know a lot of colleges are going to online only. My son actually is doing the same thing. He's, he's stuck doing online only classes at this time. But uh, in any case, uh, we released a brand new catalog ha that has all this information uh, in it over at theautomationschool.com forward slash catalog. So uh, check that out if you're interested. And with that, that's the end of the show. I want to thank you for watching. I appreciate it. We're so close to 10,000 subs. I just want to thank everybody who's uh, subscribing. Love to hear from you. You can reach me over at theautomationblog.com or theautomationforums.com. And I'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, comments on these videos. And with that, I hope you all have a great, safe, healthy, and happy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.